Okay, gonna go over this one one more time. Number 11a, the variable we're solving for right here, x, is an exponent. The only way to solve for it is to cancel this base so that it's no longer an exponent. The only thing to cancel bases is logarithms. So I'm gonna use a log base 2 on both sides. So log base 2 of 27 and a log base 2 of 2 times 2x minus 1. So log base 2 cancels that. Base of 2. So we have log base 2 27 equals 3x minus 1. If you add 1 to the other side and then divide by 3, you're going to have log base 2 of 27 plus 1 all over 3 is equal to x. Now, if this question happens to be on a calculator portion, then you would use a calculator to simplify this down to a decimal. So, <clears throat> if you have a calculator like <clears throat> this TI-84 that can do log base, and you type in log base 2 of 27, and add 1, and then divide that by 3, so we're getting 1.92. Now, if you don't have a calculator that can change the base of a logarithm, then you can use the change of base formula. This expression right here, log base 2 of 27, is equal to just a normal logarithm of 27 divided by logarithm of 2. Then you can add 1 to that and then divide by 3. And you get the same answer, 1.92. Uh, part B, this is a, a, a unique type of problem. Um, if you notice, it has three terms. I'm going to actually rewrite this first term as e to the x squared minus 4 e to the x minus 5. So this resembles a quadratic expression. It has a term being squared. It has a linear term. So if we were to factor this into two parentheses, we'd have an e to the x term. In Right here, e to the x times e to the x is e to the x squared, which is also e to the 2x. And then two numbers, one that uh, the two numbers have to multiply to negative 5 and add to negative 4. So that's going to be negative 5 and a positive 1. Now, since both factors, the product of both factors equals 0, that means each factor can be set equal to 0. And then here we get e to the x equals 5. Here we get e to the x equals negative 1. Now this situation right here is impossible. If you take e and raise it to any power, even if it's a negative number, it's never going to equal negative 1. So that provides no solutions. Over here, you just take a natural log on both sides. Natural log cancels the base of e, so x is equal to the natural log of 5. If this is a no calculator part, this is how you would leave your answer. If it is a calculator part, type in natural log 5. 1.6. Now number 12, you can't solve a logarithm equation if you have multiple logarithms on the same side. So these two logarithms need to be condensed into one log base 3. Now since there's a minus sign here separating the logarithms, when you condense them into one, those expressions have to form a quotient. So it's 12 divided by x equals log base 3. Of three. Now, if you uh, want to cancel both logarithms since they have the same base, you can use a base of three on both sides. So now we have 12 divided by x is equal to three. Just kind of think your way through this one. 12 divided by what number has to equal three? Obviously, the answer is four. Okay. Now, whenever you're solving a logarithmic equation, you always want to double check because you can't take the logarithm of negative values. So if you plug four into any of the logarithms you'd be fine. You wouldn't end up taking the logarithm of a negative number, but it's always worth remembering. Okay, question 13. We have to solve for k. Again, k is an exponent. We can't solve for variables if it's an exponent. So we got to cancel this base. So we got to divide by 3. 4,500 divided by 3 is 1,500. That's equal to e to the point 0, 0,62 k. Now I take a natural log on both sides to cancel this base of e. So the natural log of 1,500 is equal to 0 0.062k. Now I just divide by 0 0.062 on both sides. So k is equal to 
the natural log of 1500 divided by 0 0.062. Now, if you're allowed, if this were a calculator question, you would want to find out what this is approximately. So it's 117.96. Alright, next question. Um, we got a couple of uh, couple story problems here. This is good. Um, so they've given you a model to use here. Um, the way I taught it, I used a slightly different model. So I'm actually going to cross this out. Um, the model I used was A of T. The amount at any given time T is equal to the initial amount times E. to the KT, which is essentially the same thing as they have here. So they're asking how long it will take 5 grams to be reduced to 2 grams. Um, so 5 grams would be the initial amount here, and then our A of T is going to be reduced to 2 grams. The problem is we don't know the growth factor K. And they're asking us to find time. That's the point of this question is to find how long it takes. That's what it says right here. How long will it take? So we're, we're solving for T, but we don't know K. We can't solve an equation if there's two unknowns. So before we even start using the 5 grams or the 2 grams, we have to figure out the value of K. So if we started with an arbitrary amount, doesn't matter what it is. Let's say we started with 10 grams of this radium. And if we allowed a full half-life, 1,600 years, to uh, to pass, then 10 grams are going to be re reduced to 5 grams. That's why it's called a half-life. So what we're doing is we're setting up an equation to solve for k, just choosing arbitrary values of of uh, the starting amount. <clears throat> so if we divide by 10, we're going to get one half is equal to e to the k times 1,600. If we take a natural log on both sides. And that cancels that base of E, so we're going to have the natural log of one half equals 1600k. If you divide by 1600, then we're going to get an approximate value of k. Natural log of one half divided by 1600. That's equal, this is in scientific notation, it's negative four point in all of this. This e to the negative four means that you move the decimal spots move the decimal spot four places from where it is now, so that's going to be point zero 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 negative rather. Oh, the four, three, three, two, one. That's the value of k. Now that we know k, we can plug this into the formula to solve for t. So if we start with five grams, and we have our approximate value of k, We don't know T. We're going to find out how long. That's why we're leaving T as an unknown. How long is it going to take for 5 grams to be reduced to 2 grams? So we solve this equation exactly like we solved this one here. We have to divide by 5 on both sides. And then take a natural log to cancel that base of E. So we're going to have the natural log of 2 fifths is equal to negative point zero 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 four times t divided by the growth factor on both sides. So we're going to have natural log of two fifths. Now, just to be more exact, when I divide, I'm not going to divide by this approximate. I'm going to divide by the answer that was already there on my calculator. So to do that, hit second. That drags the uh, answer down here, just to be more exact. So it's 2,115 years approximately. Which now you have to consider the reasonableness of your answer. A half life is 1,600 years. Five grams has been reduced to two grams. So it's been cut more than in half. So it would make sense that our value of time should be more than 1,600 years. All right, question 15. Um, they're asking for the growth rate. So that's K. Population from 1990 to 
to 2010. That's a time value of 20 years. Um, population stands for the population now or after time has transpired. So that would be this value here, 798,000. So 798,000 equals this initial value, 656,000 E. And we don't know the value of K that's what we're solving for, but it took 20 years for 656,000 to grow to 798,000. So I'm going to put 20 right here. It's just like all the, this is just like the other two have been doing. Divide by uh, this value right here. So that's going to be uh, 798,000. I'm just going to cut off the three zeros. Divided by 656. That equals E to the K times 20. If you take a natural log on both sides, then natural log of 798 over 656. And then if we also divide it by 20, that's going to equal the growth factor. So natural log of 798 divided by 656. And then divide that by 20, we get a growth factor of 0 0.00979. Approximately. Okay. Uh, when will the population reach 5,000? So, population of trout looks like. When will the population, this is a matter of time, when is it going to happen? So, we're solving for T. N stands for the population now. It started. Um, with this equation, so um, we're going to plug in the 5,000 right here. So this is very, very similar to the ones we've been solving. We need to solve for T. In order to do so, we need to cancel the base of E eventually. But we, the biggest problem here is that uh, this expression right here is in the denominator. So what I'm going to do is multiply this side by 1 plus 19E to the negative 1.56T. And then do the same thing over here. Because that will cancel it here. So this is what we have now, if it's gone, we have 10,000 equals 5,000 times this expression. Rather than distributing this 5,000, I'm just going to divide by it. So now we have 1 plus 19 times e to negative 1.56t equals 2. If you subtract 1, that cancels that. Then if you divide by 19, we're going to have e to negative 1.56t is equal to 1 19th. So like we've been doing all the other ones here, we take a natural log on both sides, cancel the base of e, and then uh, this is gone. Now we can divide by negative 1.56. Well that's gone, so the value of time is equal to this right here, natural log. 1 19th divided by negative 1.56. So 1.88, 1.89 years. Uh, so anyway. <clears throat> Question 17, they actually don't say to solve these systems of equations, which is nice. They just want you to write it as a matrix equation. That's a very specific way of writing these. The matrix equation has a coefficient matrix. In this case, it would be 1, 1, negative 1, 1. Those are all the coefficients of these variables. Then you have your variable matrix, which in this case is x, y, and that equals the constants at the end. Same thing here. We're going to have a coefficient matrix 2, negative 1, 5, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 2, negative 3. And we have our variable matrix. 
x, y, z. And now we have the uh, coefficient of constants here, or the matrix of constant. Those are matrix equations. Again, it doesn't ask you to solve for them, it just uh, says write them as matrix equations.